On November the 3rd, 1944, a significant event took place during a train journey to Vienna. The travellers on board were none other than Adolf Hitler's deputy, Heinrich Himmler, along with Dr. Jean-Marie Moussy, a close friend and former president of the Swiss Confederation. Little did anyone know that their conversation that day would set in motion an extraordinary saga, resulting in the rescue of thousands, possibly tens of thousands of European Jews from Nazi extermination. This remarkable tale remains largely untold and unknown to the public. In this video, I'll cover a little known story from the end of the war, where Heinrich Himmler and Adolf Hitler were at each other's throat. Dr. Jean-Marie Moussy had been acquainted with Himmler since the 1930s and even served as the publisher of a pro-German newspaper. During that time, he had actively worked to diminish the influence of Jews in economic and public spheres. However, by 1944, Moussy had a complete change of heart, abandoning his previous stance and ceasing his pro-German publication. He recognised the Nazis as criminals and murderers. Unbeknownst to Himmler, Moussi had gone to great lengths, even switching his loyalties, to become an emissary of the Ergen, the revisionist Zionist movement, working covertly to save Jewish lives from the horrors of Nazi persecution. Not surprisingly, the path taken by the Ergen to reach Moussi, and subsequently Himmler, was a complex and intricate one. It all started with an Ergen representative based in Zurich. The representative skillfully cultivated a strong rapport with Samuel Edson Woods, the American Consul General in Zurich, convincing him to support Zionism. In turn, Woods introduced the representative to Yitzchak and Rekha Sternbeck, a devout Jewish couple responsible for the Swiss branch of the Emergency Rescue Committee, affiliated with the Union of Orthodox Rabbis. The Sternbergs established connections with the papal nuncio in Switzerland and gradually they gained influence within the broader Swiss diplomatic circles. Then, in September 1944, they managed to establish contact with Moussi, successfully enlisting him in the Zionist cause and astonishingly facilitating negotiations with Himmler through him. During a 1974 conference held at Yad Vashem, Significant documentation emerged, revealing that these negotiations had a profound impact in saving the lives of numerous Jews. As World War II neared its conclusion, Hitler issued a dreadful command to exterminate all the remaining Jews in Nazi death camps across Europe. However, Jean-Marie Moussi's relentless pressure on Himmler, the ruthless mastermind behind the Holocaust, caused a dramatic turn of events. Himmler, now focused on self-preservation and that of his comrades, decided to countermand Hitler's order, refusing to go down with the ship as Hitler intended. In late November 1944, Himmler's order called for the stop of the murder of Jews throughout the Reich and the destruction of the gas chambers at Auschwitz. Regrettably, this order came too late to save the millions upon millions of Jews and other innocent victims whom the Nazis had mercilessly slaughtered. It is essential to recognise that Himmler played a central role in the genocidal Nazi machinery, and his last minute intervention was driven purely by cynical self-interest. Furthermore, not all commanders adhered to his orders universally, as Hitler actively worked to prevent any subversion of his will. Amid the chaos at the end of the war, low-level commanders took independent actions, and death marches continued until the final days of the war, despite Himmler's contrary orders. However, scholarly evidence strongly indicates that at least some Jews who survived the war in concentration camps owed their lives to Himmler's intervention, an act that resulted in Hitler condemning his once loyal deputy for betrayal. This evidence comes from variable sources, including testimonies from the Nuremberg Trials, the Rudolf Kastner War Trial, the Archives of the Holocaust, and the Hecht Archive. Moussi managed to convince his old friend Himmler that, despite the war's lost cause, there was a narrow window of opportunity for him to act against Hitler by sparing the lives of camp inmates, stopping death marches, gassings and executions. This, Moussi argued, could lead to somewhat more favourable treatment on the international stage and increase Himmler's chances of post-war survival. These critical matters were discussed during Himmler and Moussi's journey to Vienna on November the 3rd. Two weeks later, on November the 18th, 
Moussi informed Himmler in writing that the United States government was willing to negotiate through Moussi via its Consul General in Zurich, Woods, about the potential transfer of hundreds of thousands of Jews from concentration camps in the Reich to safety through Switzerland. As a result, on November 24, 1944, Himmler issued orders to stop gassing and destroy crematoria at Auschwitz and its 51 subcamps. Consequently, a first trainload of 1,200 Jews from the Fressenstadt concentration camp was indeed released as agreed, but due to Hitler's intervention, no other Jews were liberated in this manner under the Musi Himmler agreement. A secondary plan was implemented, leading to the ultimate salvation of many thousands of Jews through Himmler's intervention and by preventing the complete destruction of concentration camps towards the war's end. Dr. Rudolf Kastner, former president of the Hungarian Zionist organization, affirmed in a 1945 affidavit that Himmler granted several concessions, allowing the departure of Hungarian Jews to Switzerland and suspending the annihilation of Jews in the Budapest ghetto. Himmler's unexpected turnaround caught Hitler off guard, as he was known as uh, Der True Heinrich or Faithful Heinrich. Despite his unwavering loyalty to Hitler until late 1944, Himmler was not part of Hitler's inner circle and preferred mingling with regular German soldiers. He was also keen on preserving the lives of German concentration camp guards as prisoners of war when the Allies took control of the camps. As Himmler issued orders to release trainloads of Jews, he faced resistance and counter commands from Adolf Hitler. Underlings loyal to the Fuhrer informed him about the release of the first trainload of Jews, leading to the halting of further transfers. Consequently, the secondary plan was executed, focusing on stopping death marches and preserving camps destined for destruction. In this capacity, Himmler managed to partially succeed and spare the immediate death of many prisoners. Himmler's act of betrayal filled Hitler with fury, leading to his dismissal from all positions in April 1945 and an order for his arrest. In Hitler's last will and testament, he accused Himmler of treachery, expelling him from the party and all state offices prior to his own death. Hitler's written words were as follows. Before my demise, I hereby expel the former Reichsführer SS and Minister of the Interior, Heinrich Himmler, from the party and from all official roles. Both Goring and Himmler, in addition to their disloyalty to me personally, have caused immeasurable harm to the country and the entire nation through secret negotiations with the enemy, conducted without my knowledge and against my wishes, and by attempting an unlawful power grab in the state. Unable to successfully conceal himself after escaping in disguise from Berlin to Flensburg, Himmler continued south towards the Elbe River. But on May 21st, 1945, he was apprehended at a checkpoint on a bridge in Bremervord, 120 miles away from his starting point. On May 23rd, 1945, while in British custody at the 31st Civilian Interrogation Camp near Lundberg, southeast of Hamburg, Heinrich Himmler took a cyanide pill. Thank you for watching the video. I've been slacking recently, but I am back. You'll find regular uploads, and I encourage you to subscribe. I'm going to bring you stories from the less-known corners of history over the next couple of years, and you won't want to miss it.